Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here, and today I've got for you a combination CCNA and CSENT video practice exam and a very important and very simple bonus exam tip. Uh, the topic today is dynamic and static routing. Yes, I know that's really narrowing it down, and you're welcome. And we're also going to go over the questions today in short answer format, because short answer format, when you can just identify the answer without looking at a list, then multiple choice seems easy. So we're going to work with that format. And something else a little different that I'm going to do today. I'm going to work more illustrations and networks into the questions and I've got one of those for you in just a moment so you might want to grab something to write with. It's a small network but a couple of questions here and then we'll take a look at the answers and our options on live Cisco routers as well. Let me scroll down with that for just a bit. Now in this particular diagram I've got a couple of routers, got a server there. What command will create a route from router 1 to the server but will match no other traffic. Also, that kind of route has a certain kind of name. Give me that name too. I'm throwing extra credit at you just off the cuff here. Now on router 1 also, what command will send packets to router 2 serial 1 interface if they match no other routes in the table? Hmm, what about that? So, let's go ahead. I'm going to move to the next question. What device does this illustration represent? And this ties in with your bonus exam tip. What does that represent? One more question. It's a classic, but we got to know it. Name three major differences between RIP versions 1 and 2. If you can name more than that, great, but I just want three. And we're going to tackle the answers to these in just a moment. Before we do, I definitely want to invite you to join me out on Twitter, out on our blog, and out on Facebook. You're likely watching this video on YouTube, but if you're not, we're well over a million views there, thanks to Bulldogs like you, and the Twitter and Facebook uh, connections there are growing like crazy. We're having a really good time out there as well, so I invite you to join us again on Twitter and Facebook as well. So let's go ahead and tackle that network diagram, and I'll bring a Cisco router up here in just a moment on the screen as well, and we'll be able to take a look at the syntax here, because the command that we're going to use for any kind of static route is the IP route command. But for multiple choice, simulation, short answer questions, I don't care on exam day, you've got to have this syntax down cold. So let's take a look. First off, that route from router 1 to the server, any route, any, def excuse me, static route that we're creating that matches one destination and one destination only, that is a host route. So that's what we're going to create with the IP route command. And let's take a look at the syntax of that. Oh, where I took one off there. The IP route command, what we're really interested in right now is the destination prefix. And if we're writing a route to one particular destination, that's the only IP address we're going to put here. It's 172.12.13. And I should say the only one we're going to match because next comes up the destination prefix mask. If you're matching one address, this is going to be all ones, and that means we put four 255s here. Now for your Zen lesson for the day. We have many choices, but yet we only have two. I know that's deep. What I mean by that is that at this point in the command, you have two choices. You can put the next hop IP address or the local router interface. And every once in a while I'll get a student who says, hey, wait a minute, you know, said there are two choices here and I used iOS help and I got like 20 choices. Well, what you actually have is a list of interfaces that you could use. So what we're going to use here, if we were using the interface choice, we would put serial zero here because what you're doing is putting the local router's exit interface. You never put the remote router's interface type here. That's a classic gotcha. If you were putting an IP address here, then you would put the next top IP address. So that's how it works. I go over that a lot in my videos, but the syntax is very important. It's always next top IP address or local router exit interface. Now for that second route type, what we would have in this case, if you're writing a static route that sends packets to a certain destination, if they match no other routes in the table, that's our default static route. And we have the same choices there at the end, but the syntax is different and it just looks downright strange. 
it's one of those things where you look at it and you say, well, that, I know that's right, but it still looks odd. It's going to be all zeros for the destination, all zeros for the destination mask. Then you either put the next top IP address or the local exit interface. So you could really put 3112 here, which is what I would likely do in a lab or a production network. But if you just specified local exit interface, you could put serial zero there. So good work there. This is a hub. And if you've been studying for your NA for a while, you're like, hey, man, I know that's a hub. I know you know it's a hub, but watch this on the exam because, as I always tell people, we're there to take points, not give them away. We have an aggressive attitude toward our studies and our exam taking. And the key here is you've got to watch this in diagrams. Cisco's not going to try to trick you. Everything in a network diagram is going to be very clear. But what you've got to watch out for is like something like this as a hub and of course this that we had in the previous diagram is a switch. Don't look at a switch and assume and think it's a hub or vice versa. Because frankly, especially the hub, because you just don't see many of those in today's networks. You don't bump into them a lot in network diagrams. You're almost always going to see switches. But on the exam, of course, it could be a hub. And Cisco could just be making sure that you know the difference in operation between a hub, which is just a multi-port repeater, and a switch. So just a little exam tip there. You want to watch out for that. And now our differences between RIP versions 1 and 2. And technically, I've got four here. If you have others, that's great. But these are the major ones. RIP version 1 broadcasts its updates, and RIP version 2 multicasts them. RIP version 1, of course, if they're broadcast, they're going to the all 255's IP address. RIP version 2 updates are destined for 224.009. RIP version 1 does not support subnet masking or packet authentication, and RIP version 2 does. Thank you so much for taking today's video practice exam. Again, come on out and join us on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook as well, and I'll see you tomorrow with more. Take care.